All right, well, on the rolling coverage of the 65th Siam Convention, I'm now joined by a very premier figure who is actually heading one of the most prestigious organizations in the country, Dr. Pawan Goenka, Chairman of Fitchbase. Thank you, Dr. Goenka, for speaking to us at Business Today. So, first question. Recently, we heard about your you know, your call of uh, making India a globally competitive full stack solution beyond ISRO's uh, dependence. I want to ask you first question. Is India ready to being uh, uh, ready from a space capable to a space competitive measure now? Well, India has always been competitive in terms of uh, technology and cost. Okay, uh, but it was all done by ISRO. The change that has happened now is that we are moving out of ISRO to private sector. Right, so ISRO still continues to do all the development that it has done. In fact, do it even more aggressively and put in lot more R and D into it. But ISRO will not do the day to day stuff. The day-to-day -day stuff will come to the private sector. So that's the change that has happened. And therefore, with private sector, the objective obviously is going to be earn revenue, earn profit. Whereas ISRO's objective was not to earn revenue and profit. The objective was to do scientific missions and create infrastructure and space uh, uh, sort of uh, objects which will meet the needs of the country. Right? So therefore, with the private sector coming in, we would see a lot more action on the commercial side. Okay, uh, and a uh, lot more uh, cost competition on the commercial side and therefore look for global business uh, and that looking for global business aggressively uh, is what will be new. So, uh, Dr. Goenka, you know, we're seeing the, you know, Starlink eventually starting its uh, presence in the Indian market. Uh, you have always, uh, been, you know, back, you're back in the days of Mahindra, you've been talking about a fair competition and the need for a competition to have a, a, a faster market. Uh, with Starlink coming in India, do you feel that uh, domestic players would be competing enough and will be doing enough that they are not doing right now? Uh, so, so, first of all, it is not a direct competition uh, because Starlink will be bringing in satellite broadband right? and what we have today in India is uh, terrestrial broadband. So, therefore, it is not direct competition and we should also understand that in today's scenario, the satellite broadband is lot more expensive. Uh, at least 8 to 10 times as much as terrestrial. So therefore, any concern that in the short or medium term, it will become a competitive uh, disadvantage uh, is, is, is not necessarily true. Okay? Uh, and, and the domestic players in India are very strong uh, and, and they are I think they can compete with anybody in the world. Okay. Okay. Uh, India has amongst the lowest tariffs uh, for, uh, for as you know very well, for wireless uh, connectivity. Uh, and, and the overall bandwidth uh, that we would have from Starlink over India is going to be single digit percentage of what we have today to terrestrial network. Therefore, I don't see Starlink as creating any kind of a threat, if I could say that, to an established terrestrial player. But it does bring an opportunity that some of the areas that are unreachable today uh, through con in connectivity can be reached with satellite. And Starlink is not the only player that will come in. Uh, we have given approval to Starlink. We have given approval to uh, OneWeb. We have given approval to SES. So there are at least three players that are getting ready uh, to come into India and, 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 and play in that role. So, uh, you know, uh, we have seen over a period of time, uh, even the Prime Minister also calling off that uh, nuclear and space are, are uh, places where uh, the government should open up. Uh, we still have uh, FDI 49% in the critical space sector. Uh, do we feel the need to open up further? Have you made any proposed presentation with the Prime Minister or to the government or the Department of Science or Space and Technology? What is your opinion, sir? Now, see, FDI in space sector, we have opened up just recently. Mm -hmm. uh, just last year, uh, we had done the, the revision where 100% FDI is allowed in everything. Okay. What is 49% is automatic route. Right. Okay. The border ah, so up to 49% you can come in without any approval in certain segment. Without 49% you need to be approved. And that 49 is only for some parts. In some parts 74% is automatic and in some things 100% is automatic. So it's very liberalized now and there is no need right now or no thought right now of liberalizing it further. Okay, uh, you, you know, in the recent past, you mentioned about India's first space unicorn coming up very soon. Uh, how fast is that, and when do we expect that to happen? Well, uh, obviously, uh, uh, nobody knows how valuations happen. Uh, my uh, uh, hope is that uh, by end of this financial year, 
Okay. Uh, we should reach that uh, that point where we will have India's first unicorn. Uh, this I have said this couple of times. I hope that I don't have to eat my words, uh, and uh, and and let let's hope that happens. And I think I think look, it's finally going to be the investors' confidence uh, in the in the startups in India, mm. and con confidence not just only in a specific in a specific player, but also confidence in the. Uh, opportunities in the indian market mm -hmm. if the market doesn't have opportunities then no player can do well mm -hmm. so uh, case in point that i would put forward are the two uh, tenders that we had done recently one was on the constellation uh, for earth observation satellites of 12 12 satellites where government had offered support up to uh, 350 crores mm -hmm. as a viability gap funding and the winning bidder didn't ask for any money Oh. Okay. okay, even though we are offering 350 crores. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so Why therefore, because they said we don't need the money. We, will, uh, we, we have enough, enough market potential in India. We don't want to, in fact, uh, the, the winning bidder said that we, we didn't want to take a chance to lose this project. Wow. Okay, getting 350 crores was not important. What was important was not losing this product, project. Yeah, so they bid zero. Right? And the interesting thing is that after they bid zero and got the bid, Others came in and said, allow us to also make this constellation at the zero price, at the zero price. Now, that shows the confidence that the companies, the startups have in the opportunity that India offers. Similarly, the SSLV rocket that we have transferred to HAL, in fact, we signed the agreement just yesterday. Uh, there also the bid was uh, more than double of the base price, right? So that also shows the confidence that a company has, in this case, not a startup, but a large company, has on the market potential for small uh, satellite launches in India. So you can see that these are all the signs of, uh, early signs of how business sees the opportunities in a space sector in India. Because no, no business is going to invest in the sector for the heck of it. They will invest only when they see opportunity. Right? So I therefore feel very optimistic that we are just at the inflection point on how the commercial space sector will take off uh, and uh, how some startups and some large companies will play a major, major role to put India on the economic map of space. We are already on the scientific map of space. space to put on the commercial map of space. Mm. Very interesting. Dr. Wenko, if I can also ask you quickly on the progress of the statutory powers of in space via the uh, space activities bill. Uh, where is that and is the industry expectations matching? To so uh, I don't want to hazard a guess on timeline, uh, but I would say that we are towards the end of uh, uh, the departmental drafting, meaning the draft done by the Department of Space after there are multiple steps that one has to go through. Mm. So right now we have taken into account what we understand as the, as the expectation of the businesses. Okay? However, uh, once we have the internal draft signed off, it will go for a formal public consultation. And then again, if some inputs come in that we need to look at, uh, we would... We but would, no we, timeline attached to it? Uh, it's very difficult to attach timeline on bills because bills can take sometimes long time for mm. multiple reasons. So I don't want to put a timeline right. on it. Uh, but I want to say this, which I have said many times, that... Uh, not not having the bill is not coming in the way of doing anything. It's not stopping us. Got it. Uh, now with 30 consortia vying to build India's own Earth Observation Satellite Constellation, uh, when will the final winner be announced? When will the final winner be announced? That's the one that I just talked about, the zero bid. This, oh, right. Okay, right. Okay. We spoke about that. Yeah. And lastly, uh, your thoughts on the India space sector. We have spoken on a multiple uh, bid as a space regulator in your activities. I want to ask you, uh, is India ready to have private players on board so that the space sector, critical space sectors can be developed without causing any hazards to the space sector at all? Hazards to? Uh, overall space sector. Yeah, and, so, and so and definitely. On the threat and the integrity of, the, uh, of our country as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely ready. Uh, in the last three and a half, four years, some 300 new startups have come in. Uh, the investment is beginning to come in and the government of India is putting a lot of uh, effort behind it, uh, both in terms of technical support as well as financial support to the sector. And the companies that are coming in are, uh, uh, are, are all deep tech companies, very aggressive, a uh, lot of uh, aspiration and, and, and ability to uh, play the long game. So therefore, uh, I would think that if you were to look, go back three years, and think that would we be in the situation that we are in today, in three years, probably the answer would have been no. 
So we have we have made good progress in three years, and I hope the same thing happens in the next three years and the next three years. All right. Well, uh, thank thank you, Dr. Goenka. Well, that was uh, Dr. Pavan Goenka speaking to Business Today TV on a whole lot of measures uh, for the space sector, and of course, uh, how India is ready to capture uh, what it really needs to be done for the space sector as well. If you like the video do like comment share and subscribe